Good evening and welcome to prayer meeting. We are so excited that you decided to join us here at the Oakwood University Church where we are becoming the church that Christ intended. Let's put that mission statement up on the screen so that we can recite it together, shall we? Becoming the church that Christ intended. Our church receives all people. Our church addresses real pain. Our church prepares the next generation. Our church invests in family. And our church prepares people for the next advent of Christ. Well, man, I want to say welcome to all of you. This is alumni week. <laughs> it's no longer a weekend. Uh, there are events all throughout the week this week for alumni here at Oakwood University, here at the Oaks, here in Huntsville. And uh, some of you may be watching us having traveled here in your hotel room, or uh, maybe you are on campus and you're watching on your phone. Maybe you are actually in person for worship tonight, and then immediately following worship, there will be a concert. We don't know, but we want to say a word of welcome to both those online and those in person. We are excited that you are with us tonight, and we know the Lord is going to bless you real good. Chaplain Corey Douglas is our speaker for tonight, but then there will also be music. There will be the prayer moment, all of the things that we come to know and love about prayer meeting. Would you bow your heads with me as we invite God's presence in this place, uh, as we praise him, because truly he and he alone is worthy. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We're thankful that you are here with us in this space, that you are uh, speaking deep into the minds and hearts of your people even now. God, we ask that you would bless us that you would use your people who are on the program tonight, those who will sing, those who will pray, those who will be involved in the teaching of the word tonight. We ask God that you would bless them, that you would touch them, that you would, oh, that you would, you would meet your people at their deepest points of need tonight. There are those who come looking for a blessing from you. There are those who come recognizing that their help and their sustenance can only happen if you come through. But then there are also those tonight who are excited and thankful for all that you are doing in their lives, for traveling mercies, for the opportunity to see friends both new and old and reconnect. Father, we come with a myriad of different experiences, but we recognize we serve a God who can deal with, who can accommodate, who can bless and divide each one of them. Bless us to this end tonight, we pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so uh, this is the start of Alumni Week. This is our prayer meeting, and we're just going to kick it off with um, a musical selection. So, yeah. Praise, hallelujah, your word. 
church family. Good evening to those who are sitting in our pews and good evening to those who are watching online. We are so very excited to have you with us this Wednesday evening. It's prayer meeting time. Oh, that's a time for us to get excited. So I'll ask you again. Come on, online family. I need to see some claps in the chat. I need to hear some praise in the pews. It's prayer meeting time. Amen. This is a time for us to be able to petition the throne of God, to be able to make our requests known to our Savior, a time to join with our church family and worship and just get a midweek fill up. We have an exciting, exciting worship for you today. So on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Devlier Snell, and our entire uh, pastoral staff, we want to welcome you to prayer meeting. Tonight is very special because one of our very own chaplains from Oakwood University, uh, Pastor Chaplain Corey Douglas, will be bringing the word on tonight. And then immediately following, we'll be having a wonderful, wonderful concert. So if you're not in the building, go ahead and make sure you can get here uh, in enough time. But we want to thank you guys so much for coming. Our young people people will be worshiping with us on tonight and we want to now enter into our time in prayer so welcome welcome and welcome we're so glad to have you in the house of the lord for this wednesday night prayer meeting come on now well wait a minute Denise. i know you're supposed to send the next person out here but let's try that again welcome to wednesday night prayer meeting much better enjoy our worship service Right. Good evening, everyone. It is now our intercessory prayer time, so uh, we're not going to waste any time. If you have a special prayer or anything like that or unspoken or anything like that, you, you, if you want to come down to the front, you can. But um, I just want to let you know that when we talk to the Lord, just continue to just open up your heart to him. Tell him exactly how you're feeling, exactly what you're going through, and he's going to be there. You know what I mean? Like, I just saw this video, and it, and it said that, you know, sometimes when we don't hear the Lord's, you know, voice, or we're not, you know, getting any answers, uh, it, was, it was saying that the teacher is always quiet during the test. And so, you know, even when you don't hear the Lord's voice, to continue to just lean on him and trust him, and he will get you through whatever you're going through. Put all of your trust in him, and I promise you, you will get your answer prayer, all right? So let's just bow our heads right now as we talk to our Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for just allowing us to be able to be here once again on your special Wednesday night prayer meeting. We thank you for allowing us to get through this, this halfway point of the week. And Lord, we're just asking now that you uh, allow us to just continue to trust you always, to put our faith in you, and to just allow you to lead our lives each and every day. Uh, please, Lord, be with every individual here, Lord. We're asking you to be with their unspoken prayer requests, Lord, and things that they may be struggling with. Please, Lord, just allow them to break free of that and just to trust you and to claim that victory in your name. Continue to be with any family members that could be sick, Lord, or going through something. We're asking now that you put a, a um, 
just a hedge about them and put your healing hand over them, Lord. You know, we, we know that you will come through for us time and time again. So we're just asking that your sweet spirit will give them strength, encouragement, and just allow them to keep pushing each day. Uh, be with your man service tonight, uh, Chaplain Douglas, Lord, allow, give him a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Let him be able to touch the hearts and minds of your people and give them a word to keep going, to keep pressing, and um, just a, a, a message of encouragement and excitement as well. Uh, we just love you and we thank you. And we also pray for the concert later, Lord. Be with all of the individuals who are going to be singing praises to your name. Be with the directors, Lord. We know we, they put in so much time and effort into this. So just allow it to be a great, great, fantastic program. And um, please, Lord, bring us all bats uh, later on this week for, uh, for Sabbath. And just allow us to just be able to come together, have a great time and great fellowship. We love you and we thank you and help us be ready for when you come back and get us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, oh, oh Lord, unto me. Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you again to prayer meeting this evening. We are going to go ahead and hop right into the Word. Uh, my name is Corey Douglas, one of the chaplains here at Oakwood University, and I'm excited to be with you in the building this evening. If you can, we're going to be in the book of John today, the book of John chapter 4. We're going to be reading a very familiar story and uh, sharing some insights by God's grace from His Word. It's the book of John chapter 4, and I'm going to begin reading at verse number one. If you would, if you want to stand to your feet in honor of the reading of God's word, I would invite you to do that if you want to, if you can or able to. We're in the book of John chapter four and verse number one. We're going to do a little bit of reading today. Therefore, the Bible says, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and went away into Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There was, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than your father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank it of it himself and his sons and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. He said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman said, I have no husband. He said to her, you have said correctly, I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. But Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. Then he says this, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We're going to speak just for a little while on the subject, issues in origins. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you so much for your word. We want to thank you for your spirit. We want to thank you for the fact that you are God and we are not. We thank you that you are merciful to us and faithful, and because of your faithfulness, each one of us ha is able to come into this house on this day to worship you, to seek you, to come to your throne with our petitions, and to hear a word from on high. And we're just praying right now that as we have opened your word, that you will make good on the promise of that word, that where your son is lifted up, that he will draw all men to himself. So take a little while, Father, and draw us close today, we pray in his name. Amen. 
Amen and amen. We're speaking again just on the subject, issues in origins. Well, if you're like me, uh, if you're like me, you like uh, movies. Anybody, any movie lovers in the house? I love movies. And maybe it is because of my generational disposition. I love superhero movies. Anybody love superhero movies in the house? Yeah, I, I'm partial to action movies, even though the reality is I will literally watch anything with a decent storyline or plot. I have to say that if I had to choose, I would probably watch a superhero movie. Maybe Marvel over DC, but definitely a superhero movie, right? And one of the things I love about superhero movies nowadays is, is uh, you know, one of the reasons I love superhero movies is because when I was a kid, I used to read a lot of comic books, and it's been fascinating to watch movies come to life on the big screen. Some of the things you read in the comic book that jump from picture to picture, you're now seeing in real time in what looks like real life as people are flying from buildings, there are explosions and things, and crazy things are happening. I love to see the artistic CGI work in the movies, to see what the artists are able to accomplish as they tell the stories of these superheroes. But even more than the technological advances and the presentation of the movie, one of the things that I love about superhero movies is the origin stories in the movie. Anybody, can anybody relate? Like I love to hear, and maybe, maybe superhero movies isn't your thing, but in every movie, every good script, the writers always put a origin story in the movie. Something that lets you know what the character's plot is, how did they get to where they are, who are they and why they are who they are. And so the movies, uh, each character will have an origin. You don't have to be just a hero, you can be even a villain everybody's got an origin story. So for Bruce Wayne, who becomes Batman, his origin story is that as he walked from an opera uh, with his parents, his parents were gunned down in an alleyway, which made him have a, uh, a passion for fighting crime so that what happened to him would not happen to anybody else. For Superman, born on Krypton, a planet doomed to explode, his parents put him in a ship, sent him off to the only planet or a planet they found where he could breathe the air. He ends up on Earth and his body, because it is different than the makeup of Earth, he ends up becoming a superhuman with superhuman strength. Wolverine, if you are familiar with the character Wolverine, is a man who is experimented on, who, who has a, 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 a mutated ability to regenerate his body, but then is experimented on by some scientists, and in his anger, he bursts out of the lab. And oh, the point I'm making is everybody's got an origin story. Tony Stark, the, the, the billionaire tech mogul who, who ends up becoming a hero when he has to build a suit in order to get himself out of a tough predicament, everybody's got an origin story. And one of the things that we learn as we watch these movies is that all of the characters' origin stories, no matter where they start or where they begin, no matter how they're shaped or formed, no matter their cultural background or their historical background, every origin story is just about the same story. Your characters are usually faced with some kind of issue. They're battling with their past and their present. They're trying to get away from who they were or who they are in order to become who they're supposed to be. And if they cannot overcome what they, what they are, are facing in their life, they usually become the villain instead of the hero. That is usually every origin story for every person uh, 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 in the Bible. Stuck between, it, stuck between a life that they should live and the life that is haunting them. Maybe their past, maybe some bad decisions, maybe something that happened in their childhood, but they are stuck between their past and the present and, and, and who they ought to be in the future. Anybody feeling like your origin story? Anybody, anybody got an origin story? Like, is there anyone in the room tonight who, who can testify that even tonight that some of you got some origin story, that the reason why we love to watch these shows is because we see ourselves in these characters. We see ourselves as children who have had uh, uh, maybe some, some experiences that were traumatic that pushed us to want to do medicine. Maybe we had a family member who, 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 who died from cancer that made us want to be doctors, or maybe we had a teacher who spoke 
spoke into our lives and now we want to be a teacher ourselves. All of us have an origin story. Even in our Christian walk, all of us have an origin story. Uh, one song says, man, that I was uh, headed down a pointless road to nowhere, right, with my salvation up to me, but then God stepped in. We all got an origin story. And if, if, if we are honest, our origin stories are very much like the ones in the movies where we find ourselves stuck sometimes between our past, our past decisions, or our present circumstances and the person who we wish to be. This is literally the story of the woman who is found at the well in John chapter 4. She is, in, in, in John's eyes, John is sharing her origin story. He is sharing how this woman, who we call the Samaritan woman, the woman of Samaria, came to come into acquaintance with the Messiah. He has given us her backstory, and just like the characters in Marvel movies, she is caught between a life that she ought not be living and a destiny that God has for her life a purpose for her life, a life or person she's supposed to be. She is stuck literally between the thing that gives her life and the life that she's trying to run away from. This is even symbolized in the fact that she is running every day to the well in order to find sustenance on one side, but running from her life in the village on the other side, where her life is plaguing her and is haunting her, as she has, as we read earlier, has had five husbands and has been the talk of the town. This woman is, is, is in a position that most of us can, uh, can relate to in that we, again, sometimes are, are in places in our life where we may look nice and we may be able to put on nice clothes, but the reality is that some of us are in this space just hoping that somebody doesn't do the necessary research on us to find out where we come from or decisions we've made or even to find out where we currently are even though we look like everything's all right. This woman is coming to a well because her origin story, her, her, her past has brought her to a place where she is caught again between these two positions, which has driven her to a spirit of isolation and isolation. See, she has decided that she's going to go to the well at 12 o'clock because at the well, she doesn't have to worry about her future. At the well, she can forget her past because there's no crowd at the well. She can exist in that moment, in that space, all by herself, in isolation. There's no one to question her motives. There's no one to, 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 to post about her on social media. There's nobody to vote on her at the, at the board meeting. All she has to do is go to the well and find some escape from her past and some uh, relief from the possibilities of her future, but today is different. Today, the woman at the well whose origin story we are in finds out that she's actually in someone else's origin story. The Bible says, man, John is presenting the story of the Messiah as he is making his way from place to place. He himself understanding what the woman is going through. He himself uh, coming into a very weird location in history. He himself kind of caught or really not caught but suspended between two realities of divine and, 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 uh, and, and human. He is, he, he is exactly in her state and he meets her at the well. He interrupts her her moment of isolation as we learn in his origin story, he's about to interact with this woman. And here it is, the Bible says that when he interacts with her, the big picture is that when he interacts with her, he is coming to let her know that no matter what her origin story is, he can change her origin story. That no matter where she started from, no matter where her beginning was, no matter what family she came from, the pedigree of that family, no matter what decision she made, she has a chance today to have her story rewritten or to have her story resolved because her story is just a smaller story and a bigger story of salvation. And can I get a witness in this room that somebody can testify that at some point in your life you met with this Messiah at a well of isolation in your life where your marriage was falling apart and you recluded to isolation and there you found the Messiah that you ran and ran as far as you could like Jonah but no matter how far you ran just somehow the Messiah turns up, Jesus turns up right uh, uh, where you are just at the right time, at the right hour he shows up in order 
order to let her know that I've got something that will change your entire narrative and your story. And the good news today, again, is that it doesn't matter who you are in the room, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what degree you've got or don't got, doesn't matter your job, it doesn't matter what part of the country you draw, your accent, the reality is that no matter where your story started, that if you would just meet him at the well, he can change your story. I love it. I love the story because it gives us hope. It gives somebody in the room hope to know that tonight we can have our whole narrative change. We can even maybe uh, uh, get some new chapters and some new, or maybe he can go back and erase some stuff, but we can get a fresh start at the well with him. And there's just a few things that we learn as, as he rewrites her story that I kind of want to point out to you all tonight. The first one is this. The Bible says, man, that he is leaving from Judea because he is being persecuted or followed by the Pharisees who are breathing down his neck. And you got to remember, this is the son of Mary and Joseph, who is, who is God in the flesh, who is divine, but born in human flesh. And it has caused him to be in a place of, uh, in a, well, in a really precarious situation where there are those who accept him and there are many who reject him. He is experiencing, and you know, I'm not saying experiencing in a bad way, but he is experiencing what it's like to be caught in between these two places, just like every superhero, every villain, or like this woman at the well. And just as she secludes to her isolation, the Bible says that he leaves Judea for Galilee, and in leaving, he says, I have to go through Samaria. He sends his disciples away in order that he himself can have a moment to himself even though he's got a date with the Samaritan woman. And the Bible says, man, that as he is there, he asks the woman to give him something to drink. Now, we know, man, that the reason that he asks for something to drink is because he is trying to let this woman know that he understands her story. See, one of the things that we, one of the mistakes we oftentimes make in this thing called church or this thing called faith is that we oftentimes remove ourselves so far from God that we look at him as something that is unattainable. We read our Bible and we read our word and we look at the marvelous things that are done and we end up coming to the conclusion that, that this stuff is stuff that we can't really obtain. And so we convince ourselves to isolate, to withdraw to our wells. But the reason that he meets her at the well is to let her know that although it may not feel like it, although it may not feel like you're by yourself, I actually understand your story. He's saying, just like you, I know what it's like to be the outcast in town. Matter of fact, let me tell you my story. See, my mom... My mom went to visit her cousin for three months and came back with a baby bump. Then she told everybody, oh, no, 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 nothing happened over at my cousin's house. It was the Holy Spirit. Then I had to, then I had to grow up in Nazareth where all the children knew, there goes the Son of God. My brothers picked on me. You th we even have record in the Bible where they're like, man, if you're, if you're who you say you are, go prove it to the people. He, he knew what it was like to hang between two realities. He was divine, but he was human. And what he's saying is, I understand the struggle of having to deal with the flesh. See, one of the mistakes we oftentimes make is that in our attempt to worship the Messiah, we forget that he was very much human. Book of Isaiah, I've said this from, from this from this very spot multiple times. The book of Isaiah says, And the woman and the virgin shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, for he shall deliver his people from the sins. This is the sign that he will give. And that's the verse that we quote in order to justify that Jesus is, is the Son of God. But if you continue to read, it says, And from the time that the child will know to choose good and evil, Basically letting us know that at some point he had to go through the very real human experience of choosing good over evil. And what he's coming to let this woman know is that although you may be looking like, you ought to be, like you're all by yourself, although you may be uh, feeling like nobody understands, although you may be thinking that you're at the bottom of the barrel, I understand how you feel. 
I don't know if the, how that makes you feel, but it makes me feel pretty good that the, the Messiah I got, the God I serve, understands, is in touch with my feelings. The Bible's going to say he is, he, 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 is, uh, uh, he is in touch. What does it say? He, he is, uh, oh, Father, help me tonight. He says uh, um, he is tempted in all points. He, he is not, he is not a, a man that he is un, uh, not in touch with what we've gone through, but he has been tempted in all points. He is fully God, but he is fully human. And because he was human, he understands what you're going through. Now, granted, he didn't have social media. He never got drugged on, 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 on TikTok and, and on Facebook. But imagine, the Bible said that even in Galilee, up to 20,000 people would follow him around the countryside. He knows what it's like to be trolled. And he's letting this woman know, I understand what you're going through. In fact, because I understand, I want to offer you something better than this little moment of solitude that doesn't deliver you from either reality. He says, let me give you living water that will spring up in life in you. And it brings us to point number two. He tells her, I understand. But what you need to understand is that you're trying to get away from something because you're afraid of the destination and you're afraid of your origin. But it's not about the origin or the destination. It's about the process and the journey. If you follow the story, you get this, this picture where they're having this conversation that starts with water and then begins to go into deeper realities. What do you mean? What it says, well, well, uh, give me something to drink. Why, why are you asking me for something to drink? I'm a Samaritan. What, what, what kind of thing is that? You, you know you guys don't talk to us. Like, like you know that we are the half-breeds and, and whatnot. Like, you don't, you don't really work. And he says, yeah, but listen, that, that's, that's not the issue. If you knew who was asking you, you would ask me to give you something to drink. She says, wait, that's, a, that's an interesting statement. I would... You, I would ask you, he ain't talking about water. She now has a choice to make. In every character's story, this is the point of, this is the point of resolution, or the, not resolution, this is the point of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, this is the crossroads where every character gets to choose who they're going to be. In every character's story, there's a major moment where they get to decide if they're going to go to the left or to the right. And here is her moment. She says, he wants water from me, but now he's saying he could give me water. He don't got a bucket. He got to be talking about something else. And she could leave it right there. Instead, she asks more questions. So give me this water then. And she starts the journey. Now he can work her through the process. Well, honey, if you want water, you got to go get your husbands first. Husbands? <laughs> Sir, you, you must work for the government because I don't know how you know about all my husbands. And then he says, but it's not really about husbands. And she says, well, listen, if you know about my husbands, then clearly you're not a normal person. And she continues to go through the process. Because what he's trying to show her is not just about the origin or the destination, it's about the process. He says, listen, if you rock with me long enough, I can show you things. In fact, let's not talk about your husbands. The real issue is the issue of worship. The issue is where you place your worship. She says, listen, I know you guys worship on this mountain. It's clearly you're a different person, so let me, let me go deeper with you. You see, you know, you guys say Jerusalem is where to worship, but where should I worship? And because she continues to press on him, because she continues to seek to go deeper with him, he, she, he can go deeper with her. Madam, you, you asking all the right questions, but guess what? This thing ain't really about Jerusalem. In fact, my father is spirit, and those who worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. He walks her through a process that starts with a bucket of water and ends with the gospel. I'm not just trying to quench your physical thirst. I'll give you something to drink because I understand your humanity. I'm thirsty myself. But what I'm really trying to do is quench the un what feels like the unquenchable thirst of your origin issue. See, what he says to her is, you got to understand where you're coming from if you are going to understand where you're going. Mercy, this is point number three, and then I'm done, I promise you. He says, well, let me drop this on you. The Father is spirit, and those who worship him 
must worship in spirit and in truth. See, what he's really saying to her is, you think that I am a prophet. You're about to say I must clearly be the Messiah. Because she's going to say, well, we're waiting on Messiah to usher us in. And he's going to say, but I'm, I'm, I'm that person. I'm, I'm the Messiah. And the reason I came, this is his own words, is to get you back to the Father. I came in order to restore your point of origin. This is why he's going to say 10 chapters later, he's going to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will go to the Father except they come through me. Because those who worship him, he says, the Father is spirit. And if you want to get back to him, you've got to come to him as he is in spirit and truth. He lets her know, man, that this whole process does not just end in you sounding better. It doesn't just end in you knowing better. It doesn't just end in you being able to text your other Christian non-Adventist friends and say, ha I got some truth you don't got. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't help you to just give better or, or serve better in church. He's like, no, the whole point is to get you back to dad. And if you come to him in truth, if you come as genuine and honest, if you come to him and allow the process to work, where you're not denying the past, and you're, you're, you're willing to say, yeah, I did have those five husbands, he can work with you and bring you back to your original point. See, in every hero's story, what you notice if you, look, if you, if you, if you follow the storyboard, usually every, every hero has a point of origin. Then they have that decision they have to make. Then they have the journey, and it's not a journey that is linear, it's a journey that is circular. Meaning that where they started, they will ultimately end up. Meaning that the whole point of the process is to get you to what writers and authors call the point of return. And can I say that our Messiah, just like for this woman on the well, took time out of his busy schedule in eternity, came down to this dried up well called earth, sat down at the well and shared in our infirmities. Let his body taste what, it, what it's like to be hungry. Let himself taste what it's like to be sweaty on a hot summer day. Knows what it's like to have to clip his toenails and be made fun of just so that he could understand and, know, and let us know that we are not by ourselves sat down at the well of life with us and lets us know that it's not just something for you to achieve, but it's a process I'm willing to go through with you. And when I come into my kingdom and sit on the throne next to my father, I can invite you to sit down with me. You will have an origin or a re-origin story back to your original origin. No more issues and origins but you will be restored back to the Father. And the, and the good thing is this. Let me, you know, I'll, maybe I'll close with this, Father. I, I hear you. This is, the, the good thing about the story is this. See, sometimes we get the process so backwards. You know, we, we're into this thing where we believe you got to know, then do it, and then you'll become it. I'm telling you, that's why some of us struggle. That's why some of us have issues. That's why we have an issue escaping that tension between our past actions and our future selves or the self that he wants us to be because we're so busy trying to be something that we don't know yet or trying to do stuff that we're not. Listen to the woman's story. He came to the well and found this, this woman, this sinner who was hiding out in isolation. He talks to her, he approaches her, he walks her through the process, and he tells her in the process, he tells her this, he says, look, he says, uh, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta worship, you gotta worship me in, 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 in spirit and truth. No, he says, I will give you water and it will be like a well springing up in you. He, once you taste the water, the change you're looking for becomes a natural byproduct. I hope y'all hearing me. So that by the end of the story, this woman becomes the greatest evangelist in Samaria because she knew, then became, and then did. Got to trust that process. Came here to tell somebody tonight, listen, man. Father's saying tonight, he's saying, listen, you know, you... You feel like you're out here by yourself. You feel like you're struggling. I, and I, listen, can I be real with y'all tonight? I know, I know we're on the live stream, but I, I believe in being honest and real. Like, I, I, is there anybody in this room who is not struggling right now? No, anyone? You're not struggling? It's okay, you can say it. Say, I ain't struggling. If you're doing all right, you're doing all right. Oh, we all struggling. People stressed out. 
We got folks sitting in this room can't pay their can't pay their bills. We got folk in this in this room right now dealing with sins they thought they overcame 20 years ago. People in this room struggling. Showing up looking like everything's okay. Well, if I do it enough, maybe I'll become it. Now the process is you got to know it, then you got to be it, then you'll start doing it. You've got to get back to your, your origin. You've got to get back to the beginning of your story. See, this is why our Messiah comes. He comes in order to restore what the Father intended for us in the first place. He comes back to recreate Eden in our lives. He comes back so that just as he stooped in the dirt on that, 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 that sixth day of creation and begins to form man out of the dust, he's saying, no, I want to come back and form you the same way. The same way I originated you then, I want to do it for you now so that you don't have to worry, so that even when life is throwing you curse, balls you've got peace because you know where you're coming from and you know where you're going tonight somebody's saying listen I'm tired of coming to this well pretending like all I'm coming for is water I'm tired of coming to this well and acting like I didn't leave a, a, a life behind in the village like I'm, I'm, I'm tired of acting like everything is good tonight somebody's saying I want to submit to that process. I want that water. I want it to spring up in me so that it can become life. If that's your desire, I want you to maybe stand to your feet. We're going to pray together tonight to that effect, that God will achieve that in our lives tonight, that he will uh, 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 correct the issue we have in origin so that we will return to our creator so that he will be able to shape us and we will be the people that he needs us to be. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you tonight. For your word. We want to thank you for the testimony of this woman. You know, it's funny because John is really not about her. It's about your son. But you share her story so that we would understand that if it's possible for her, it's possible for us. Tonight we come here saying thank you because some of us can relate to her story. Some of us know what it's like to be hiding out in our jobs because we, you know, we don't want people to really know who we are hiding out in, 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 our, in our homes, hiding out in church, making ourselves busy with the work of the church while all the while our lives are crumbling around us. But we're so grateful that that doesn't have to be our reality. We're thankful that you are a God who is intentional who will send your disciples away, will clear the room just so that you can have one-on-one -on -one time with us. We're thankful that the same time and attention that you, that you paid this Samaritan woman, you would pay that same time and attention to each person in this room. And Father, that's what we're asking for. We're asking that your spirit will come by here, that you will speak to our hearts, that you will impress upon our minds, that you will uh, uh, invite us to and journey with us through the process of being recreated and reshaped and reformed and filled with water, filled with your spirit, so that that water will overflow out of us into a dark world, so that we can not only enjoy being called out of darkness into your marvelous light, but that we can be a light into the world, a light into our families, a light into this nation, a light into this planet. Father, we pray that you will do it, not so that we will just be better people, not just so that we will have bragging rights, not so we can just chart and say, look how far we've come, but ultimately so that your name will be glorified, that your kingdom will be exalted, that your soon coming will be, will, will be sooner and nearer and will come to pass so that we can go home. We're praying that you do it for your sake for the sake of your kingdom and in your son's name. Amen and amen. What's good, online family? We are so excited to share with you a new initiative called Cameras, Cameras On. on. <laughs> Cameras On. God, you got to 
and you got to turn the camera on. Look, this is going to be a fellowship time. Um, it's going to be online. It is specifically with you in mind. We want to meet one another, but your camera's got to be on. It's going to be every fourth Thursday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. And all the details you need will be on OUCSDA.org slash online virtual services. We'll have a QR code for you and the link uh, on the screen for you as well. Talk to us, man. So we, we want to let you know that it is going to be a relaxed setting. Okay? Relaxed. We're going to be chilling on that Cali vibe. <laughs> oh, Cali, Cali vibe. Cali vibe. We got Cali vibe coming now. down Malibu Road, you know what I mean? So we want you to be able to just chill, relax, yes. you know, get some yes. snacks, some popcorn, just anything. Yeah. And make sure the camera is on, though. The camera's got to be okay? on, though. Yes. But, you know, we want you to know this is not like a Bible study. This is not a church setting. And this we love those. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we just want to, you know, have an intimate moment with you, like yeah. a chill setting, and yeah. just be able to connect with you. We see you commenting all the time yeah. we love it mm -hmm. but we would love to have that you know the interaction the fellowship outside of just the you know just the typing, typing. yeah right right so right, we're, right. You know, we're looking forward to meeting you all and seeing you all and it's going to be so be this is actually going to be part of a, a broader initiative right. in terms of our intentionality for our online audience this zoom and it's going to be via zoom, zoom. so that yeah. there's that intimacy already, so you know yeah. one of the things that we're going to do leading from this is we're going to have pastoral office hours for our online yeah, yeah. For, strictly for online so yeah. if you need to connect with a pastor if yeah. you need counsel or if you just need somebody to pray with you we want to be intentional with making ourselves available mm. during our office hours to be able to connect with you listen listen family this we do not count you as a number you are not a number to us you are part of the family and, and the truth is god will require of us <laughs> as my Lord. leaders that my we, Lord. You know, what have you done with my Cheap. And yes. so we want to make sure that you guys know this is a space that has been intentionally created with you in mind. And there's more. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. wait, there's <laughs> more. more. <laughs> be because we are going to be building out a platform, kind of a headquarters for us to be able mm -hmm. to engage online with a virtual uh, auditorium, with a yeah. virtual front desk. <laughs> wait, 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 don't, don't give all the details now. Don't give all the details now. But, but listen, mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. Uh, the fourth Thursday of every month, 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to make sure you're here in the space for cameras on. Yeah. Be blessed, family. Man, we are excited about cameras on. If you cannot tell, <laughs> Pastor Chris, Pastor Paul and I are excited about it. I, I was chatting with Pastor Paul. He said I, I was checking with him to see, are you going to be able to make it for cameras on? Because it's tomorrow. Catch that every fourth Thursday. The fourth Thursday is tomorrow. Uh, so he said, yes, I will be there. So Pastor Paul, Pastor Chris, and myself will be there for Cameras On tomorrow evening, 6.30 p.m. Online virtual services page is where you will go. One of our moderators is going to put that in the chat for you. If you haven't registered already, we're looking forward to see you there. It is alumni weekend here in Huntsville. We've, we've shared that. That's what's going to be happening this Sabbath. And of course, we want you to pay attention to all of the events that will be happening. Several of them will be be uh, made available live online as well. And so uh, Sabbath, of course, the speaker is Pastor W.R. Snell. It's going to be happening at the Von Braun. Uh, so we want to make sure that you guys are tuning in. Uh, it will be right here on the Oakwood University Church uh, YouTube page. So if you want to be able to tune into that, definitely make sure you are here with us for that event. Also, during the weekend, uh, alumni weekend, we will have an open house uh, over at BOL, open house at BOL, uh, March 31st, that's this coming Sunday from noon to 2 p.m. You will be able to kind of walk through the offices, uh, see the studio, uh, maybe maybe even take some selfies. I don't know. I don't know what you might want to be able to do during an open house, but the whole team will be there and we are, are excited to be able to meet you. So if you are in town um, and you are, are here for alumni weekend, carve out some time between noon and two on Sunday to come see us over at the Breath of Life Studios. Uh, it is there at 5100 Adventure. Boulevard, which is in the Office of Regional Conference building. So we wanted to make sure you guys get a chance to check us out for that. Then on Monday night, uh, Pastor Chris has been growing. He said that this, this group uh, Monday nights has been growing consistently. And so we want to make sure we give that another push, another plug uh, for you guys to be able to really sink your teeth into uh, a deeper look, uh, you know, g g traversing through the word of God through pa with Pastor Chris Dorsey. It's going to be an amazing time. So we hope that you guys would 
will uh, in, indeed enjoy that time with us there for a deeper look. We uh, also have something coming up this coming Friday night, and it is better shared through video. Hey family, I know the weekends can be long, they can be hard, and you go through a lot. And so at the end of each week, I wanna encourage you to join me and the Breath of Life team for the Weekend Exhale with BOL. We were having these programs on Sunday, but now we wanna begin the weekend giving you a little nourishment, a little nurture, giving you a little boost as you start the weekend. Every first Friday, I'm gonna be doing a Bible study entitled The Playbook, where we're gonna be looking at issues of doctrine and culture through the lens of the scripture. You don't have to guess, you don't have to hope, God is giving us a script in the Word because the Word is His playbook. I want to invite you to join me every second Friday for a show called Point of View, where Gianna and I do a deep dive into issues of marriage, dating, and relationships. Every third Friday, join Pastor Nugent and myself in the Vision Lab, where we're going to be making a heavy deposit into leaders of all ilks. We're going to be pouring into pastors, entrepreneurs, CEOs, ministry leaders, authors, and we're gonna be talking about how to build that vision and move it from an idea to a reality. And then on the fourth Friday, we're introducing a new program called What Just Happened? We're gonna be looking at whatever the trending topics in culture are. Danita, Pastor Nugent, and myself, we're gonna be addressing whatever the trending culture topic is for that week or that month. We're gonna be engaging with you going to be answering your questions and trying to figure out how we as believers find our place in the larger culture. We go through a lot during the weekends. You can get overwhelmed. You can get a little stressed out. But before you go into the weekend, take a moment and join us to stop, breathe, and exhale with BOL. There is no shortage of things happening here, uh, both at Breath of Life and at the Oakwood University Church. And we're excited for this relaunch of our series of shows. We used to be on Sundays, as Pastor Snell said in the video there, but now they'll be on Friday starting this uh, coming Friday night. So not this Friday night, this week, which is alumni weekend, but the following Friday, April 5th, we will kick that off and it'll be every Friday thereafter. So definitely lock it in. We would love to have you as part of the audience there for the exhale, the weekend exhale with BOL. Uh, also in the month of uh, uh, April, we will be having our excuseless launch. Uh, we'll be launching the book. Uh, Pastor Snell has written another book, y'all. And then we will also be uh, launching the speaking series, teaching series, and the 21 days of prayer on the 13th and 14th, respectively. And we are excited about both. And I hope that you have marked your calendars where uh, be in prayer about this. This is a major initiative that has many sides to it, many facets. And we want to make sure that uh, we bathe it in prayer, that God's uh, uh, special touch and his, his hand would be upon it, that it would be guided to the people who need to hear it and need to be impacted by it most. Uh, my, my last uh, announcement for tonight is one that we haven't said for a while, but I've heard from several of you that are have from different places, uh, Florida, some in Maryland, others in New York, even in California have shared that you're looking to be here the, the weekend of July 5, 6, and 7 for IRL weekend. This is the In Real Life weekend. This will be our first homecoming weekend for our online family family to travel to Huntsville and worship together in real life. Meet the pastors, meet the media team, church tour, campus tour, record your story, group photos, fellowship meal, the, the preached word with Pastor Snell. This is going to be a great time, and I just wanted to make sure we get a chance to share that with you as we get ready to close it out today. We had a phenomenal time in worship tonight. Pastor Corey really preached the word, and we want to make sure that you don't just keep it to yourself, that you are able to share that with someone else, uh, that you share that with someone else. <laughs> That's the first thing Thing we're asking you to do is to share. But then we also ask that you would pray. It's prayer meeting. We always ask that you would pray uh, for your fellow believers, pray for the other uh, 
request that you saw in the chat as you feel so inspired, as you feel so moved uh, that you would pray. But then lastly, that you would give. And we're going to put some ways that you can give up on the screen right now uh, through Breath of Life TV, breathoflife.tv. That's online. And then you can also give through mail, a P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama, 35814. Then you can also give over the phone by calling the number 256-929-6460. You can also text the phrase, give the number 2, B-O-L-T-V. That's the phrase. Text it to 1-888-364-GIVE. Then, of course, lastly, you can give on Cash App, dollar sign, Breath of Life. Dot TV. So not, not no dot, actually, Breath of Life TV. Every dime you give, we will pour it right back into the ministry to ensure that this gospel, this good news can be preached to the four corners of the earth, and then Jesus can come. We thank you for your time and attention tonight. We pray that God blesses you as you go throughout the remainder of your week. Hello, hello, hi. Um, the show, uh, the program, uh, the Ross, the Raw Mass Choir concert, it has not started yet, but if you are watching this live stream on the Oakwood University Church YouTube channel, I implore you and invite you to switch over to the Oakwood University YouTube channel. That's where the Raw Ministries Real Authentic Worship Spring Concert will be taking place. So we'll give you a minute or two, hop over to the other channel, and be welcome to a really great night and worship experience.